Hi, Sinead. I'll get straight into it. My question is sort of twofold. I've been going about eight weeks now, flat out on LinkedIn, posting every day. And it, there is Congratulations. A Thank you. <laughs> and yeah, we're getting there. I'm doing a weekly little chat. It's kind of a fireside chat mm -hmm. around new leaders at all levels. So it's one to five years, five to 15 and 15 and onwards. And you were quite right earlier saying what you did about it's the quality of the people that actually come through. Mm -hmm. but my first question is, I'm getting a lot of people say, yes, they're interested in coming to the little webinar. It's only an hour it's from two to three on a Wednesday mm -hmm. in South African time. And we get about 60 today. There were 65 people that registered. Mm -hmm. But getting them then to register on Zoom to come to the Zoom is where everyone just falls off the wagon. So that's my first question. How can I make that more efficient? In other words, to convert more of those that say they're coming. Mm -hmm. And let me ask you just to answer that one first, if you may. So your question is how to get people from the audio event to the webinar? Yeah, well, they register for a webinar, but then they don't actually register on Zoom. They just register on LinkedIn. Oh, okay. So, yeah. so there's kind of a disconnect between LinkedIn, yes, I'm coming, to actually registering on Zoom. There's a complete yes, disconnect yes, there. Yes, so I see the machine of LinkedIn live events and webinars as separate. So you'll rarely, if ever, see us create a LinkedIn live event where the link in the live event goes to a Zoom. And that's just because okay. it can be confusing for people, number one. Number two, it could cause that last minute, oh my gosh, now I have to register for this. And it feels almost like a trick yeah. versus me telling people in the room, if you're interested, go to the challenge. It's not like a trick. If you're interested, you're just going to click the profile. The answer to your question yeah. is a landing page where they can willingly okay. come and register. And the second fold answer to your question is making the next step the most logical one. So it would be logical yeah. for someone like Kathy to go because she could literally just recreate her LinkedIn strategy. And a lot of the people okay. in the room probably resonated. And it's more visual. Yeah. I could walk you through it versus this just being the audio. So as yeah. long as it makes that logical progression, then you should have a good percentage of the room register. To get the people to show okay. up to the actual webinar, you'll need a good sequence of emails reminder emails a lot of I've them got those. Yeah. okay good so yeah. i would just do a landing page okay and then final question and i'll get off are webinars more efficient for you or audio what do you mean by efficient i guess would you generate more emails and inquiries from your audio or from a webinar definitely a webinar a hundred percent. But a lot of people will go from the audio to the webinar. And there's a lot of people that have, let's say, been to my webinar and they're like, well, I want to work with you one-on-one. -on -one. And maybe they'll go to an audio and then maybe they'll just message me directly. The greatest value of an audio for me is being able to do this, is being able to hear people's questions because then I can go on now to create a live event or a YouTube video on basically how to get more webinar registrations through LinkedIn. And I know that it would resonate yeah. with the right audience for me. So it's more like the interactive part of the audio is the most valuable thing for me, but definitely when it comes to conversion, webinar, hundred okay. percent. Thank you so much. And you're welcome. Uh, keep up your great work. Bye-bye. Yeah, you're welcome. Hey, how you doing? I am in the travel industry. I design luxury vacations for busy professionals. I'm trying to use LinkedIn more to grow my brand and grow the problem that I solve. My main question is, I'm trying to figure out what type of content to really put out to specifically gain the emails to hopefully grow sales. I see this platform as a great opportunity. I've been growing, but I like what you said. I don't need the matrix. I need the true leads. Yeah. Yeah. So I just want to say, first and foremost, you're doing God's work because planning a vacation is a nightmare. <laughs> okay. <laughs> In and of itself, especially if it's a new place. And especially for someone like me, the last flight that I booked with the hotel, I forgot that hotels don't let you actually check in until the evening and the flight got there at 8 a.m. <laughs> Never again. That was an adventure. So what I would do if I were you, is there any mega influencer that's doing something similar? 
Well, you know, that's the funny thing is you have influencers, but they're not doing travel. They're more of doing a lot of things out there. They're more for the matrix. I'm for the, just like yourself, a person is doing great work and busy, but they don't want to plan their travel because it's hard to do. It's, you know, they want to work on what they're good at and we handle it from there. So I got to really speak to that busy professional out there, speak their language. It's a niche. It's a good niche, but it's not about getting a hundred thousand people to look at. Yeah, for sure. It's it's about getting pinned. And (laughs) And those TN know what they want. Yeah. So tell me a little bit more about your top clients and I'll be able to give you the best answer. So for example, my top clients, and I'm going to make a post today, they're just celebrated a milestone birthday. She has the financial ability to have a vacation, but she did not want to work on it at all. So she outsourced the information to us. It was just a domestic one for this one where she stayed in Vegas, but we handled all of her excursions where she went to shows. We had the reservations at the dinner. We did a photo shoot. A spa for them. We had private drivers take them everywhere. So they had a great time. It was a, you know, a milestone birthday that they love. And I have done it in Africa, Europe, all around. So usually it's for celebratory events Mm -hmm. because the vacation really means something to them, such as an anniversary, birthday, things of that nature. What questions do they ask and what kind of financial abilities do they have? Is it multiple six figures or is she a DECA millionaire? What level we're talking here? Six figures and up. You get them in all ranges. And that's what it is, is because we can work with budgets that are reasonable, but we deal with only luxury vacations though. So it's just like different styles of luxury. You can have a Mercedes or you can have a Rolls Royce. The questions they ask are most of the times, what type of destinations are out there based on their vacation goals? What can can you design to meet my vacation goals? For example, if they want a shopping trip, if they Mm. want a wellness vacation, what can I get for different budgets? Another question is, uh, why would I use a travel advisor? But a lot of them know that because we give them peace of mind so they don't have to do it. And I think another thing, too, is sometimes they use their admins just to book a vacation. Mm-hmm. And they're not getting them. The admins are just going online and just pushing a button. And it's not really what they want. So I would say we don't book a vacation. We design a vacation based on their goals. So there's a few answers to your question. And it really depends on your skill sets and what you love to do. And you can do with what you wish. So the first answer to your question is, well, what can I create for free to build my email list? It could be something very direct, like the best destinations for this type of personality or the best destinations where no tourists will be. It really depends on their personality. The best destinations for milestone birthdays, if you're an introvert, it doesn't matter, right? Right. The second approach I think could scale a lot better for you. And I'll explain it this way. I have a friend, he has a gardening YouTube channel. They do $30 million a year. He only started selling the seeds now. But what he does is he just educates people about the gardening. And a lot of their revenue comes from the gardening beds. So they'll start watching because they love to garden because of this. He gives a lot of free education. And then he just so happens to sell the gardening beds. And by the time that they realize that they trust and they want to support his brand. And so they buy his gardening bed. So it could be a more indirect approach where let's say you create foodie entrepreneurs in Atlanta because foodies tend to also travel and you create that group and you just so happen to help them travel. Okay. And you could build your list with a free community like that in that way. So one approach would be very direct. Here's a downloadable thing. Here's a training. I don't really think a training will work well in your space because again, if I'm trying to save time, I don't want to watch like an hour thing. If you're going for more higher level clients, they're going to want to call and calls usually don't build lists. So you're going to need something like a free community or something they could watch in 10 minutes or less to understand what's going on. A book would probably work really well for that kind of group as well. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm just going to answer some of the questions that I receive through those short videos and build a community because I think it's a lot of us out there. I was that before I started this company, that busy professional. So I'm just going to use that. Definitely like the information you're providing. Just like I said before, I've been following you for a while now. I enjoy your work.
I appreciate yeah. it. Another thing you could do is also luxury staycations, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that would be awesome because someone like a busy entrepreneur or whatever, they may not be able to go for a week somewhere, but if they want to do a lot of self-care and they're high performing, especially female entrepreneurs, they like staycations and it would vibe. So, you know, how to make sure your Airbnb doesn't have cameras. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is a big thing out there, even in the hotels as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you even doing a video showing safety stuff that they should be doing in a hotel. That's how you're going to get people who are thinking of even traveling. I know that little hotel thing that you put on the chain or the lock so that mm -hmm. nobody could break in the door. A lot of people don't even know about that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, and it's a variety of different things. Safety is definitely key quality, cleanliness, all of those are what makes a good stay. People just want to be safe and have peace of mind. So we'll definitely look into that content as well. Yeah, but just I would start and then obviously if you watch the 90 day thing, just double down on what they're liking the best. But yeah. always remember people who travel tend to have other things in common. And Shankar is my business partner. He loves to travel. And okay. I know that they're foodies. They are probably posting a lot of images related to their travels. Shankar, you want to chime in here? You travel a lot more than me. Yeah, I mean, I always like to combine networking with my travels as well. So you know, knowing what are the hotels or meetups and maybe groups where it's worth my time meeting someone new at a very high level. Yeah, networking is definitely a key. Networking is how I've grown my business. So yeah. I think even when I usually have some group trips, bringing people together, and now I see them doing business together from my trip, it's really fulfilling. So that's great. And I've listened to both your YouTube videos and, and you guys do a great job. Yeah, now I can't wait to see your YouTube videos. <laughs> well, great, 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 great. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Hello.